Well, my name is Wayne Sedlak, and this is Vision Viewpoint. With me today is Don Pridemore. Don, thank you for coming on the show. My pleasure. Don is <coughs> running in the 13th State Senate District here in Wisconsin. And to be frank, folks, we need men like Don. Now, we've all been through the elections. We've all, we've all seen on a national scale what's happening in the federal government. But you know, there's something called interposition of the lesser magistrate. We need men like Don in our state legislature. Don, 13th Senate, uh, State Senate District. Give me some areas, cities, towns. Well, it starts in Hartford and uh, goes through Watertown, okay. up to Beaver Dam. So uh, north down, of Beaver Dam, west out to right. Watertown, then south to south to Oconomowoc. Oconomowoc, okay. Up to Lomira, okay. And uh, very smaller towns in uh, farmland area in between. A lot of farmland in that area. A lot of farmland. Well, in general, Don, first of all, who are you running against? Uh, who's your, I have who's two your rival opponents. There? Two opponents. Yeah. Uh, Todd Menzel is one, and also John Jagler. The primary is on the 16th of this month. Correct. Folks, I want you to understand, you have to do something about the elections now. This is the primaries. February 16th is the primary. So, if you're in the GOP, you're going to do something about it. Now is not a time to sit back and wait. Tell me generally. I mean, I know, Don, what you stand for, but I want people to hear it. In general, well, I'm a, I stand for the Constitution of the state and the country. I'm a strong Second Amendment proponent. Uh, I supported Donald Trump for president. Unfortunately, yep. uh, fraud kept him from taking office. That's right. I believe he won Wisconsin as well. I do too. And uh, I have about a 20-point uh, system. No, not a system, but 20 points. I'd like to stress. Can't get into all all of the. Minutia at this point, but uh, 20 points to address what I feel our, our ability for people to create fraud in our election system. So, you're going to be addressing that as we do these interviews. Uh, there's four major concerns that you see for this district. Mm -hmm. So, one of them you just mentioned it is election fraud. There's major areas that, of course, we saw fall apart when it comes to mm -hmm. stealing our vote. Mm -hmm. In Wisconsin and we'll address that in yet another sit down with you in May agriculture is another, is another area right education is yet another in health care mm -hmm. for people of Wisconsin now, let's talk about agriculture what are you gonna do for the farmers well, in I'm, your district I'm first generation off the farm myself uh, my mother was raised on the farm I used to spend my summers out on the farm slopping the hogs and feeding the chickens. that's two of us <laughs> And uh, I didn't get into the uh, butchering part of the, of the business, but right. uh, I left that to the uh, more trained and less skeemish people in, in sure. the family. But uh, my ancestors came over from Germany back in 1868 on a sailboat, and uh, they got the 40 acre and uh, a mule right. uh, uh, right. from the government right. back then. And uh, when I came on the scene, uh, I had nine uh, grandparents uh, so they, they were able to raise nine kids on a 40 acre farm wow. and make a go of it today you couldn't do that right right but they were so self uh, sufficient they they had everything on that farm uh, if, if a nuclear bomb went off uh, in Milwaukee <laughs> they uh, were they self could, sufficient they, they, they could live out there another year probably without uh, minus the fallout uh, on their own without any help from anybody well, I didn't grow up on a farm, but I had a lot of uncles and aunts mm -hmm. in uh, farm areas in Ohio, actually. I grew up in Pittsburgh. We'd travel out there, and I'd often spend days in the summer, weeks in the summer out there. Mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about. It's a lot of hardworking people. Oh, yes. Don, specifically, what do you see <coughs> as a need in the 13th District? Well, I primarily I'm interested in preserving farmland. We have farmers out there that are losing their farms right now. Uh, they can't make it small family farms i hate to see that happen but if we can get them to come together more on good farmland 
And what I propose is a, an idea called agricultural corridors. Use that in Pennsylvania. Yes, they do. Okay. And uh, it's very successful out there. What it basically is is it allows contiguous farms. Eight would probably be a, a good number. Mm -hmm. Four to eight, primarily. And will allow these farmers to get together. And the corridor really is a pathway between all the farms. So they can move their farm lumpen, farm implements that they share amongst each other so they don't have, all have to go out there and buy harvesters or planters and everything right. like that. All the loans, that's right. You only yep. use those part-time right. every year. So right. uh, why should each farm have, have to buy their own equipment? Let's share them amongst themselves and help each other in the process. What like, prevents them from sharing now? Just uh, organization, lack of representation? What, what, what do you think is the problem? Well, what prevents them probably is... Uh, is the fact that they don't all get along together. But mm -hmm. what these corridors, the, what the idea really is, is allows them to uh, produce product on their farm uh, so they can specialize in certain crops, oh, good. All right. whether it's right. beef, chickens, right. whatever. And when that comes, to, when they specialize like that, now they can take this produce and market it right there within the area that they're in. So one farm or maybe two farms can have a, an actual grocery store uh, on the premises. I know there's some, you know, cleanliness issues that have to be worked out, and slaughtering oh, sure. uh, is not. That's always the case. Yeah. Yes, that's always yep. the case. But what this allows is the communities, towns, and villages to grow around these uh, pristine farmland areas, rather than just gobble up land as the cities expand and the right. towns expand. So. Uh, that to me is what they're using in Pennsylvania. It's successful out there. And uh, uh, another problem that uh, I've been told happens is farm workers in short supply. So, and most of these farm workers, especially if you ha have dairy cows, you need somebody there year right, round, right. not just seasonal. Right. So, the biggest bottleneck right now is green cards coming from the federal government. It takes a year in some cases for these green cards to be issued. And uh, most of the people that are immigrant farmers that come over here to work in, in the fields and whatnot uh, send their money home. So why not create a program where they can eat, 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 you know, go back home, visit their relatives and families back in Mexico, for instance, and then be able to cross the border without having to climb over a fence uh, to get here. and uh, that would give them protection. Safety to and from, make it all streamlined, and then yes. the farmers get the kind of help they need. Exactly. Which they're not getting now. Exactly. If we still have problems with the federal government, then we should have a state program that allows uh, green card access through a green card Wisconsin program. So what's prohibiting that now? Just a lot of red tape? Yes, red tape, uh, government controls. Immigration? Yes. Now, okay. farmers still need trade agreements with foreign countries so they can right. ship their product overseas. So right. We're not going to affect that. We want that to continue. But other than that, we want to get the government out of their business. Right. Because these are freedom-loving people. They're very independent. And what they hate the most is too much government overburden, paperwork, and all that stuff. Well, a lot yeah. of it they don't understand. Therefore, they don't trust. Yes, exactly. So you've got the workers. You've got the shortage of workers. Mm -hmm. You need the contiguous cooperation. Yes. If you want to put it that way, of the farmers. Mm -hmm. And so you would give a voice to them in the state senate. That's correct. That's so what correct. do you see as some of the hurdles? Well, obviously, when you introduce something new that has not been introduced here, you have to rely on experience in other states. So you're pioneering this. Yes. Yes, we have nothing like that in Wisconsin. It has been done, though, in other states. Yes, that it I know. Has. Yes, it has. So learning and studying that in other states, you want to bring it here? You want to give Correct. a voice to the farmers in, in your district, uh, all throughout, uh, well, through here in mm -hmm. four, 4 Wisconsin, excuse me. So, any other problems you see? What do the farmers tell you? I know you're out with the farmers, you're talking to them, <coughs> you, you got meetings going, that I know. So, what are they saying to you in addition well, to those areas? They're always open to new ideas. Uh, this is a new idea, so it may take some Seems time. Like there's two of them. Because immigration without red tape is a new, <laughs> is a new idea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And, um, you know, that, that's the main thing. I want to communicate with the farmers. You've been doing that. 
and, and people uh, have, I'm gonna have keep liked that, that. Going, good and I'm gonna hear their problems I'm not one to you know come up with an idea and just sit in my ivory tower and uh, wait for things to we've to already happen. been among them you've already had meetings you've already been meeting with the farmers uh, I anticipate that'll continue that's the way you did when you were back when when you were in office you right. met with the people you were here right. you talked with people people had an open mm -hmm. had open access to you and I would expect that that would continue other concerns other things you've, you're hearing well, from them when I was in the assembly I did introduce uh, a raw milk bill mm -hmm. and that would have allowed farmers as long as they meet certain cleanliness standards, Clean that, yeah, right, right, uh, to sell milk right from the farm. Right. I mean, I drank raw milk as a kid, and right. I, I drink it now. Right. But it's still against the law, and my bill actually made it to Governor Doyle's desk, and he uh, vetoed it. He vetoed it the very last right. day. Right. And it was only because a few UW professors were whispering in his ear, you know, if one person comes down with a milk-related illness is going to destroy our dairy uh, product in Wisconsin and give us a bad reputation. So again, you got the Democrats, and he was, mm -hmm. um, ruling by fear. Yes. You know, everything is fearful, and everything, anything can go wrong, except when they're in control, and they want their programs, and things right. do go awry. Right. So, in any event, you've proven yourself and, and your concerns for the farmers, and you're in the assembly. Mm -hmm. So, other things people are, are, are talking about? Well, just to continue on the raw milk thing, the only, the only time we have a problem with raw milk is when people took milk uh, unannounced to a farmer that was not intended for human consumption. And when I say that, I mean there might be some feces or something that, that get right. into the milk process. Right. Right. And uh, obviously you can't have that. So if the farmer doesn't know you're there and you're taking their milk uh, unannounced, uh, you're going to have a problem. That happened in Racine a, a few years ago. And, uh, of course... Uh, that gives the, the, the product a bad name and uh, bad press. Right. But to prevent that, you know, we have those uh, established farms that have cleanliness standards already established. Uh, the farm I bu buy my raw milk from, I've, I've been drinking it there for over 10 years and I've never had a problem. And I attest that because the farmer knows his cows. These are typically small herds maybe anywhere from 60 to, to 90 cows. And uh, they are very diligent about this. They see a cow that's sick, they quarantine the cow from the rest of the herd. Uh, when I walk in the, in the milk barn, I can see a uh, certain number of cows on the quarantine list, and I know they've been isolated. So I know the product I'm getting there is safe. And that's pretty much normal procedure with farmers. Mm -hmm. Don, anything else on this? I know this is a... A deeper subject anything else you want to add to it when it comes well, to I farmers? Well I just want to make the point that farmers are probably the, one of the most if not the most hard, hardest working people seven days a week on a farm you don't get vacations unless in this cooperative effort maybe that would allow you more time to do that because you have other farmers close by that can help out uh, to give you a few days off here and there. And they always need representation. That's correct. They are some of the most poorly represented Mm -hmm. in the state of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So right. there you have it. When it comes to the farmers, your opportunity farmers, <laughs> I've heard you complain about not having a voice, at least the kind of voice you want in Madison. Now's your opportunity. So, and to be frank, the rest of us should be rallying around the farmers. Arguably, not only are they the hardest working bunch of people, or among them, mm -hmm. they're the most valuable. That's right. What would so, we do without food? What would we do without food? Well, no, we wouldn't go very far. We, we, we wouldn't get very far chewing on some of these books. And is <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Don. <laughs> but, you know, um, I'm always amazed how poorly represented they are. There's always strictures. There's always regulations. There's always something can go wrong right. from the department. So maybe if they get a voice, a lot of that can end. That's correct. So, well, folks, again, here's your opportunity, Don Pridemore. The primary is on the 16th of February so do something about it now is not the time just to complain now is not the time to sit back now is time to act and while you're at it send people to visionviewpoint.com have them listen to Don have them contact him that's why we're here so Don I wish you well thank you and certainly we'll be praying for you and uh, praying that 
you'll gain the, the victory in this primary. And then there's the big election. So let's mm -hmm. take one step at a time, folks. That's right. Support them. You've heard them. Now stand with them. So we have, rep have representation in uh, Madison. The kind of representation that's both experienced and um, what's the word upright? Isn't that a word we're missing in our government today? Somebody that knows they're doing and has the moral rectitude and moral stature. You know what we want? Again, Don. Yes. Pray that it goes well. Thank you again for coming on Vision Viewpoint. My pleasure.